I'd like to shift gears just for a minute to tell you a little bit about the journey that I've been on lately that led me from being a spokesperson for the health insurance industry to an outspoken critic of it. Along the way, I've met many, many wonderful people. Uh, and many of them have shared their stories with me, like the grandmother in Virginia, whose grandson had been turned down by every insurance company he applied to because he was born with a birth defect. And like the young woman in New Hampshire with a severe form of asthma, who now has to spend so much, she finally got insurance, but she has to spend so much for premiums and out-of-pocket expenses that she can barely pay her rent. And like the woman in Maine whose brother died because he couldn't afford insurance, and the woman in Pennsylvania whose son died because he couldn't afford insurance at any price. He couldn't buy it at any price. A little over two months ago, my journey took me to a place called Baraboo, Wisconsin, where they were having this great big outdoor event at the county fairgrounds that they called Fighting Bob Fest. Uh, it, was a, it was a strange, strange event. I'd never seen anything quite like it. These people came, and they were there for an entire day to hear people give speeches, and, and I was invited to do one of them. And it was a beautiful, and beautiful sunny day. And I, but I asked the people who were there to suspend disbelief for a few minutes. If you're familiar with that term, if you're seeing a movie that's fantastic, you want to enjoy it, you have to suspend disbelief because you know it's fantastic. So I asked them to suspend disbelief just for a few minutes. And I asked them to imagine that it wasn't sunny, but it was raining that day. And I asked them to imagine that every one of them was either uninsured or they had insurance with such high deductibles or limited benefits that they still couldn't afford to get the care that they needed. And I asked them to imagine that many of them had driven 400 miles or more and that most of them had slept in their cars the night before. And I asked them to imagine that they had lined up in the dark hours before sunrise to get a number that hopefully would get them inside the fairground gates. And I asked them to imagine that they had been waiting in long lines in the rain for hours just for a chance to be treated by a doctor, volunteering his or her time to help them get the medical care that they needed. And I asked them to imagine that those long lines led to barns and animal stalls that other volunteers had scrubbed down and disinfected the day before. And then I told them that they didn't have to suspend disbelief after all, because the scene I had just described actually happens and happens often in this country. I know that because I witnessed a scene like that at a county fairgrounds in south of Southern Virginia, not far from where I grew up, in Tennessee. That was a scene that moved me so much that I knew it would just be a matter of time before I would leave my job and one that paid me quite well as a spokesman for an industry that had made it necessary for people who could have been my relatives or former neighbors to stand in line waiting to get care in animal stalls. I had actually begun to question what I was doing for a living at least two years before that, but I didn't have the motivation until that day to do anything about it. Now, I'm ashamed to say that I let myself get caught up in deceitful and dishonest public relations campaigns that work so well for my industry that hundreds of thousands of our citizens have died and millions of others have lost their homes and been forced into bankruptcy so that a very few corporate executives like I used to work with and their Wall Street masters could become even richer. As I testified before the Senate Commerce Committee in June, the higher up the corporate ladder I climbed, the more I could see how insurance companies confuse their customers and dump the sick, all so they can satisfy those Wall Street investors. I described how insurance companies make promises they have no intention of keeping, how they flout regulations designed to protect consumers, and how they make it nearly impossible to understand or even to obtain the information that we need and I also told those senators how the industry has conducted duplicitous and well-financed public relations and lobbying campaigns every time that Congress has tried to reform our health care system and how its current behind-the-scenes efforts, and that's what I mean by duplicitous, to tell you what they think you want them to say, but behind the scenes are behaving very differently. But those behind-the-scenes efforts may well shape reform in a way that benefits Wall Street far more than working families. I noted that just as the industry did 15 years ago when it led the effort to kill the Clinton <clears throat> reform plan, 
It is using front groups and other devious means to spread lies and disinformation to scare Americans away from the very reform that would benefit them most. One of the reasons I decided to leave my job uh, where I hated corporate communications at Signal was because I did not want to be involved in yet another PR and lobbying campaign to kill healthcare reform. Now I know you all here in Arkansas especially have been bombarded uh, in recent weeks with advertising because healthcare reform advocates as well as opponents are trying to persuade, persuade Senator Lincoln to vote a certain way. The folks I want you to know that when you see ads um, about long waiting times to see doctors in Canada and allegations that care in other healthcare systems is rationed by government bureaucrats, or you see someone who's a senior citizen saying that she's worried that healthcare reform will take her benefits away, the insurance industry has helped to pay for those ads. And every time you hear in those ads about the shortcomings of what they call government-run health care. Remember this, what we have now in this country and what the insurance companies are determined to keep in place and spending millions of dollars every day in lobbying and PR expenses is Wall Street-run health care. And, and know this, we already have one of the most unfair means of rationing care in the world, not by people we can hold accountable on election day, but by insurance company executives who answer only to a few wealthy investors and hedge fund managers who care far more about earnings per share than your health and well-being. As part of its charm offensive, the part of the PR campaign that they want you to know about, the health insurance companies say they're willing to make concessions and are bringing solutions to the table this time. But if Senator Lincoln and her colleagues go along with their, their so-called solutions and do not create a public insurance option to compete with these companies. The bill it sends to President Obama might as well be called the Insurance Industry Profit Protection and Enhancement Act. Senator, Link Senator Lincoln's thinking, by the way, apparently has been influenced by the lies and the misinformation being spread by the insurance industry and its shields, which, by the way, include long-term allies like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the National Association of manufacturers and the National Federation of Independent Business. Every time the industry has been under threat, they had willing allies like those organizations to walk in lockstep with them. And they're behind a lot of these ads also you're here for seeing. 